Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kasim and today I want to talk to you all about Apple Pro Raw and how to edit photos with the Photos app in your iPhone. See, when you take a standard photo, the camera and the software are tweaking that picture to what they think is best. So that's kind of like, you know, going to a restaurant and you order the chicken fajita omelet on the menu. When you get that omelet, it's been tweaked by the restaurant to taste the way they think a fajita omelet should be. Now with a raw format, this is totally different. This is like you going to the grocery store, buying the chicken, buying the ingredients, buying the seasonings, buying all the vegetables, and now you have all that stuff, right? You get home and when you go to make that omelet, you can add as much chicken as you want, as many eggs as you want, and all the seasonings you want, the vegetables, whatever you want to put in that omelet to make it a chicken fajita omelet, that is going to be customized to how you want it. So see, that's how the raw format is. Those pictures have not been adjusted and that's why they're such large files. All the details are there, but it's just up to you as to how you want to tweak those around to make it into a picture that you find beautiful. Now, before I get into photos and how to edit them, I just want to say to you all that I'm not a professional photographer. All this information I'm giving you guys is just based on my personal experience and how I end up adjusting these pictures to my liking. You might not find them to be good, but the good thing is, is that by the time I'm done with this video, you will know about every single tool that's available to you inside the Photos app so once you have an understanding of all those tools, you can really play around with all the settings that you want and get a picture to be the best way possible. So now I've got my phone here and I'm gonna put the screen up for you guys. So the first thing I wanna show you is how a raw picture and a standard one can be edited. And you'll see that the range of exposure, saturation, contrast, anything you go to adjust, you just have a wider range with the raw format simply because everything is there it just hasn't been altered and because it hasn't been altered you can alter it to whichever way you like so if we look at this first picture of my minion friend here this is a raw photo so now if i in the top right go to press the edit icon and i go into the exposure tab if i try to adjust this you'll see that i can get the exposure really high or really, really low. Now, similarly, let's do this with a photo that isn't in raw format. So I've taken this same photo in just with the standard settings, right? So go into edit and now go into exposure. And if we dial it up or lower it, you'll notice that there's a big difference. In the raw format, the exposure can be raised as high as possible. And it's it's almost to the point where you can't even see the minion anymore. But that's just to go to show you guys that the kind of versatility you have with the raw format. So now before we get into editing this minion picture and making it more colorful, more vibrant, I want you guys to go into the settings of your phone and go into the camera and then go into formats. And here you're gonna see I've enabled Apple Pro Raw. So this is what you wanna do if you've got a 12 Pro Max. Now, all these things that I'm about to say, these are useful for any of you that have an iPhone 12, 12 mini, any older iPhone, because you're gonna see that with these settings, once you learn them, you can really make a picture shine a lot more than what you get as a standard photo. So now let's start with our minion friend. So up top here in the left, you'll see that it says raw. So this is a raw photo. So we're gonna go ahead and hit edit in the top right. So now the first tool that you guys are gonna see in this editing panel, is gonna be the auto adjustment tool. Now this, if you press on it, it's automatically gonna make adjustments on what it thinks is best for this photo. Now, if you scroll forward, You'll see it's adjusted the brilliance, it's adjusted the highlights, and we're gonna get into all of these, each and every one of these in a second. But I just wanna show you that 
it's going to make automatic adjustments. So I personally don't use this tool. So if you want to, and if it gets a good result for you, then that's fine. But let's move on to exposure. Now exposure, you're basically adjusting the light, right? The amount of light in the photo. So exposure depends on a lot of things. First of all, it's the light in the scene. Then how much of that light is being directed towards your image sensor. So that's going to all be dependent on the size of your lens and then also the size of the actual sensor. So if you go to adjust this to the right, it's going to increase it. And then if you go to the left, it's going to decrease it. So what I'm going to do with this one is just decrease it by a little bit. So right around 20. I think that for me personally, is going to be good. So now let's move on to brilliance. So brilliance is actually a combo tool that you'll find in iOS, Mac OS, and it's desi designed for these devices. So what brilliance is going to do is it's going to tone down your highlights and brighten your shadows. So if you move it to the right, you'll notice that it's going to tone down the highlights and brighten the shadows. So notice how the darker parts of the image are getting brighter and brighter as you move the slider over. Now, if you go to the left, it's going to do exactly the opposite. It's going to darken your shadows and uh, make the highlights brighter. So for this photo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the brilliance alone because I'm going to manually adjust the highlights and everything. So now highlights are always the brightest parts of the image. So whenever you're adjusting this, you're either going to be making those brighter parts brighter or you're going to be making them darker. So what I'm going to do with this is just bring it down a little bit. And you guys will see when we make our way towards the end exactly what I'm trying to do with this photo here. So next you have your shadows. So if you look at this little minion figure in front of him is his shadow right there. So if you increase this to the right, it's going to make those shadows brighter. So it's reducing that shadow. And then if you move it to the left, it's going to darken that shadow. So Let's go for a little bit darker. So right around there. Okay. Now contrast. So contrast is actually adjusting the contrast between your subject or object and the remaining environment. So in this case, when we go to increase the contrast, we're basically increasing the contrast between the minion figure and the rest of the environment. And if we decrease it, well, we'll be decreasing that. So if you reduce this or increase it, you can see the difference. Now I'm just going to turn this up just a little bit. So right around here. Now brightness. So brightness is exactly what it sounds like. It's either going to brighten your uh, photo up or it's going to reduce the brightness. So you can brighten it, reduce it. I For this photo, I'm actually going to leave it alone. So next let's move on to black point. Now black point is only going to brighten the darkest tones in your image. So if we, if we look at this image, you'll notice right below the minion where there's a lot of dark area. If you adjust this to the right, then it's going to darken that. So if you adjust it to the left, it's going to make it brighter. So this is only affecting the black tones. So the darker tones of your image are being affected by this. I'm going to leave this for this photo alone and let's move on to saturation. Now with saturation, you want to be careful because if you oversaturate it, it's just going to make the colors so vibrant that they're going to look like they're artificial. But if you bring it down too much, then you're going to lose too much vibrance in the color. So you want to adjust this kind of just a little bit. So I'm going to show you so if we go to the right, notice how the colors are getting richer. So notice the wood table, the wood thing in the back, and likewise. Now another cool thing about saturation, if you want to ever take any image and just make it black and white, go to the saturation tab and drop it all the way down and it'll make it. 
black and white. So now for the saturation, see my goal in this photo is to actually have the minion pop a little bit. So I'm gonna actually increase the saturation a little bit to right around here. So let's move on to Vibrance. Now Vibrance is for enhancing muted colors. What's good about Vibrance is, is that if you have a picture with somebody in it, then you can adjust this and make muted colors richer without really affecting the saturation or the skin tones of the person in the image. But in this case, my goal here, I wanna increase it because I want the colors of the minion and that little rocket he's holding on to, I wanna make those pop a little bit. So we're just gonna dial this up just a little bit. I think right around there is good. Now, warmth. This one is just, you're either making the colors of a picture warmer or cooler. So if you dial this to the left, it's gonna cool things down. If you dial it to the right, it's gonna warm them up. So look at that, cooler and warmer. And of course, nobody should be doing it this warm or nobody should be doing it this cool. So you just wanna play around with this until you get your desired look. So I actually want to make it a little bit warmer. So right around here will be good. Now tint. So for tint, if you dial this to the left, it's going to apply a green tint. And if you dial this to the right, it's going to apply a more of a purplish tint. So look to the left and then to the right. This is useful in certain situations, but for this image, I really don't need it. So I'm just gonna leave this one alone. So next let's move on to sharpness. Now sharpness is going to actually enhance the detail of your photo. So if you wanna increase the detail, just dial this up a little bit. Now for this picture, I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit. So probably around 10 and that's good. Next, we're gonna talk about definition. Now, the definition tool actually uses contrast to improve the level of detail. So if you have like a close-up detail shot, definition is really gonna come in handy for that. But for this one of Dominion, it's we don't really need it here. So just gonna skip out on that and move on to noise reduction. Now, if you've ever seen a picture with a little bit of grain in it, so anytime you have like low light conditions, you'll see that photos tend to get grainy. You can use the noise reduction tool to kind of take that out, but you don't wanna do it by too much because then it's gonna apply too much of a softness to your photo, and then it might just not look right at all. So for this picture, we obviously don't need it, but you know, it is a great tool to have. Now, last but not least, you have vignette. Now what this does is it'll actually add a darker look to the edges of your photo or a brighter one. So if you dial this to the right, you'll get darker edges. And then if you dial this to the left, you'll get softer, whiter edges. So for this one, again, we're gonna leave this alone. We're not gonna mess it with it for this photo, but this is nice like if you were taking a portrait and you wanted to just give it a little bit more of an edge you know, you could add it to a portrait just to give it a better look. But for this one, we don't need it. So now that we're done with all the adjustments for this photo, if you see in the bottom right, you have done, just click on that and that will apply all those changes to your photo. Now don't worry because you can just hit edit again from the top right and always go back and make more adjustments. Or if you look in the bottom right, you'll see revert. And if you tap on this, it'll revert the image back to its original. So now that we're done with learning about the tools, I wanna to show you guys a couple of photos that I've gone ahead and edited. So let's start with this first one over here. Now in this one, the sun was right behind me and it was shining towards the camera. So you'll see there's a lot of sunlight rays at the top and overall this picture is just too bright. I wanna bring myself out a little bit more so after making some adjustments, this is what I resulted in. So I just adjusted, if we look here, I've adjusted the exposure, the brilliance. I brought down, the, I, I made the shadows darker. 
I increased the contrast between me and the background and I adjusted the warmth to just give this a little bit of a warmer look and also the vibrance because see the vibrance this is why earlier I was saying is that vibrance is good for those kind of pictures where you have a person in it because if you adjust this up and down you'll notice that it's not really playing with my skin tone so that's why I went ahead and adjusted this to make the grass a little bit greener and just to give it a better look. So now see, this is why I say that you've just got to edit a photo based on your personal needs, your personal wants from a photo. So how you want it to look, like this look that I've done in this image, you might not like it. This might not be your style, but for me, it's perfectly fine. But then again, you want to be careful and you don't want to do too many adjustments to the point where a picture looks unnatural. So I have one last image I want to show you all. This is actually a photo of my car taken from an iPhone SE. Now if you look at the original photo, it's, it's nice but it's pretty flat. Like look at the colors of the sidewalk, the trees, even the car itself. My car has a very deep blue and on a day where it's clean like this, it's really shiny. So I went ahead and tweaked this to this. So you could see that it's so much more blue and the sidewalks got color now, the trees have color now, and everything is just more lively. It's really flat here, it's really lively here. So this, you know, knowing how to utilize these tools and just playing around with them can really make a difference in taking standard photos and making them look so much better. The reason I wanted to show you guys with the Photos app is because, you know, you and me are both, you know, out there taking everyday pictures. And, you know, not everyone is able to get on Photoshop and spend hours and hours on editing a picture and making it look great, unless you are a photographer by profession or if you really love to do photo editing. But for the average person like you and me, all these little tweaks, all these tools that are built into this app, they're going to be more than sufficient to help you achieve a much better look for your photos. So, you know, that's why I wanted to take, you know, just show you guys that you can take standard photos and make them look amazing. Now, what you'll realize is that if you learn each and every one of these tools with time, you're going to be able to just open a photo and know exactly what to adjust. So if you just keep practicing, and getting better and better, that's what I had to do. I had no idea what most of these things meant when I first started editing pictures with the Photos app. But as you learn, as you understand each tool, then there comes a time where you take a picture and you know exactly what to adjust to make it look better. Now about Apple Pro Raw, it you guys should be getting the update anytime tonight or maybe tomorrow because I got it pushed to my phone earlier today. And so make sure you enable Apple Pro Raw and you can, you know, play around with it. But I wanted to also say that, you know, with Photoshop or apps like Darkroom for the iPhone, that's when you're really gonna be able to take the raw format to the next level because then you can do things like, you know how you have that picture of me with a turtleneck and the coat on, you can do some crazy things to changing the colors of your shirt, changing the colors of the background, and you can even tweak individual sections of your photo. So, you know, if you want to get into that, maybe first learn these tools and then slowly work your way into Photoshop. And Photoshop has been now updated to support the Apple Pro Raw format. So with that said, guys, have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions for me and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos. Take care of yourselves and I will see you all in the next video.